I'm going to look at two films that have just been released, well, in the past year from this video. Um, one, a Horizon American Saga, Chapter 1, one of four, if all four gets made, depends on the box office, which has not been promising, and also The Iron Claw, which is a wrestling movie. But a well-respected, critically acclaimed wrestling movie, which is very unusual. Um, so, I'll start with Horizon. Um, basically, it's a Kevin Costner epic project. He shot parts one and two, and the idea is he goes back and shoots parts three and four after a quick brief. I think he shot bits of three, but he still needs to shoot three and four. It did not do that well in the box office, but it came out in the summer. And if I feel this is a kind of film that will do better like on video on demand and as word of mouth gets out, it did not do well critically. There was two reasons for that. The first one is it's an old fashioned film and critics do not like old fashioned films. Critics generally see them, uh, unless they've been ironic and been subversive, they'll see them basically as being like too right wing for them, even though this film's not right wing. Um, but it feels because it's old fashioned, it feels to a lot of critics that means the right wing, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's the thing with critics is there's a bias either to the left or the right, depending on, on the country and the culture. There's always going to be a bias one way or the other. It used to be a right wing bias against any subversive films, now cricket critically it's now left wing, so they hate the kind of what they see is right wing stuff and it's like which is more traditional and it's just like just it's just a mob following whatever the fad is it's not actually useful in any possible way but that's one reason critically get lambasted unfairly in my opinion secondly there's no ending it stops there is some resolution for some stories to a point but it's like obviously part one of a longer story. So that means it's harder to judge the whole thing. Because Costner's trying to do something like Napoleon, which was the Abogast Napoleon, where it's like this epic tale that spans, you know, years, you know, which you'd normally do in a book. He's trying to do that as a film. And um, I fear that um maybe it's parts one and two, just like Abogast wanted to do more Napoleon stuff, but only got up to invading Italy. <laughs> um, so, this might be a review for a film that it will never be finished. But I hope it does get finished because there's a lot there that's interesting. There's a lot of promise there. One of the things that the critics really went against is you don't get Costner. Costner's building the star of the film. He does not, it's a three hour film and he does not appear at all about the end of the first hour. <laughs> Because it's much more, he's using his name to get it financed, and he's put some of his own money into it, but it's not a vehicle for Kevin Costner. Which is the, the good part of the film is the fact that he knows he's a character within a story with a bunch of other characters, and the characters are going to interact, and they're going to, the story's going to weave around lots of different people. And that's kind of what it is. But a lot of people were expecting a Costner film and it's not a Costner film, it's he's just a character in it. As well as being the veteran director, but he also is just a character in the story. He's an important character, but there's other characters who might be as important. The first hour, because it's called Horizon, Horizon's this place which is um has been sold as a place to go to if you're a settler, if you try to leave the east of America. This is happening just as the Civil War starting and some people want to move out and get away from all that bloodshed. And also they want to move and have a new future because the, the east coast has become a bit stale and there's lots of cities but there's nowhere to move you want to advance in life. So a lot of people come in westward and there's this place called Horizon which has been sold. So the first, by not true, you see the first settlers starting up creating partitions 
and they were instantly killed. Off screen, but you, you find the bodies later on um, by some travellers who come and find it. Then you get a new settlement in the same place. And just as they're settling in, they are attacked by the Apaches, who pretty much accurately see that the white people coming in is, is just going to force them back again and again. All these settlements are not good for the Indians. <coughs> and, and, and within the Indian culture, there's two different groups. One says, you're not going to stop this. This is what they are. They're going to keep coming. You have to find a peaceful solution. <coughs> so this, um, another one is like, no, we have to fight back and tell them, no, you can't come any further. You've gone as far as you can. Uh, but for a lot of the Indians, it's like, that's not going to work. They're just going to shoot you. So, you. so the Indians have a division. So the kind of more violent ones attack the settlement and kill lots of people. And and basically you get a full like first hour where you're getting the settlement, the attack, the people try to survive the attack, and it's a big sequence. And then a kid escaping and riding to the next to, to, to the military base, which is miles and miles away to get them to tell them. And yet and you, you basically get a a house in the hill which is um the last stand for some of the people and and from this this area basically you introduce a few characters. One's a woman played by Cena Miller and her, her daughter. Her husband and her son are both killed during their first attack. You also introduce a kid who um has his whole family killed during the attack and he's the one who goes and gets the army. You also get the army Led by uh, Sam Worthington and uh, Michael Rooker. They come and um, find out what's happened, rescue the people who take them back to the army base who have survived, but also have to deal with the fact that there's going to be a militia going out after these Indians. And because it's hard to track them down, he's even saying to the people tracking them, Are you going to track these Indians or are you going to track any Indian? Because he knows that eventually that it can go south and it could start attacking other Indians and causing even more problems. So the little the kid who was who went and got the army, he goes with the people doing the, the hunting. So that's one thread you're gonna follow. The other thread is Worthington taking Sarah Miller and hunting some of the other people survivors back to the base. And you get that which is a very kind of um John Fordish story basically of um Worthington being in love with Miller but He's very married, and sh and they're both decent people, and it's a kind of repressed romance that slowly comes together. You've also Michael Rooker and his wife, you know, and and they are an older couple who have lost a child. You've got Danny Houston's the commander, and he's the one who explains the politics of the situation to Worthington, like how cynical it can actually be, and how the country's turned so apart on the way in the East Coast. And all this stuff is nicely done, but it is probably the thing that um, makes some certain critics hate it because it is harkening back to the kind of John Ford era, which is very kind of printing the legend type of thing. But it is important to the film, otherwise the film would be unbalanced because it's showing you the, some basic decency amongst uh, the people who are trying to make a new life for themselves. So, and it keeps on coming back to this story, but the action side of it for the Worthington's character is, got, is finished there. And it's more the character stuff. And, um, but I like to, I was going back to actually allow the story to kind of breathe a little bit more because other sequences is more action and this was the kind of human side of the story. So, uh, then you go to Costner, who's a guy who's um, moving horses from one part of the land to the other. So he's, he's arrived at a location with horses. So, so, so he's the lover of the horses. He's meant to the lover. And he's just just recovering from all that trek. And he wants, he's just trying to relax. He runs into this prostitute who's um, played by an actress who you'll remember from Mad Max Fury Road. She's one of the brides. But she's a lot more to say in this one. And um, they strike a romance. She's she's the sister of Jenna Malone's character. And Jenna Malone escaped from an abusive husband, not an abusive husband, an abusive lover, who's who was a important man in an area and, and 
took a child away and has basically been hiding from this family of psychopaths ever since. This, at this point, the psychopaths catch up with them. Uh, Maloney's um, husband is killed. Um, Costner kills one of the brothers to protect the woman and the child. And, and him and the sister who has a child, was babysitting the child at the time, escape from the area. Maloney's taken back to the psychopaths. But you, you, this sequence is given time to grow and you get a sense of um, the darker side of the West. This is where they're, they're in towns and there's certain psychopaths because there's no real rules. So in this land, you actually sense of the danger of certain people and uh, how horrible they can be. And this guy who, in a sequence with investors over there, basically mental talks on him alone. You see the brothers and just mental and has no patience and he's out for blood. And because they try to find the boy, that's what they try to find. Try and find the child, and um, the child escapes. Now they have to take go back with the dead brother. And there's a great scene with Costner and the brother. Costner's not saying much. The brother's yapping, but try to threaten him and make him feel scared. And Costner's not buying it, and it really works because one's yapping, one's been silent, and you know the violence is going to come. And both of them know as they're up this hill talking, the violence is coming. And, and that's what the film does well, was a sense of just how horrible, violent, horribly violent the West could be. Like, um, whether it be like the, the political stuff with the Indians and the settlers, or just some crazy people, when there's a sense of this could explode at any moment. So there's a terrific sequence there, um, and then Costa and the, the sister go on a run with this child, and you follow them as they travel and they're getting hunted down by these guys and how do they survive and that becomes the other part of the story and how that resolves itself it resolves itself to a degree but you get a sense of it's, that's just the beginning really it's just the setup, but it is really well done, you get a sense of Costner has been a, a decent guy but capable of violence and um, just how dangerous the world is you, you also get th these um, people travelling west on a tr on a trail, basically uh, led by uh, Luke Wilson. It was nice to see him back in a big movie. Uh, he's always an actor I like, but he hasn't been in much recently. And he's the guy trying to control the chaos of these settlers. Because you get some people who are, uh, like by Will Patton, who are very good, very decent, who will pitch in and uh, are, are working hard. You get some who help out but have some psychopathic tendencies who are a bit perverted and at least a very good scene with Wilson having to tell them off or something and they're threatening him back. Um, so the, that element where something can explode, you've also got this sense of them going through territory and no one's quite sure are the Indians here going to be attacked them or not or what's going to happen. You've also got a uh, an English couple who are totally unused to this lifestyle and who are slowing it down a little bit by not understanding where, where they are and how dangerous it is. One of them was about Ella Hunt who was in An in Apocalypse. It was like, when I was watching the film, I was like, who is that actress? I know that actress from somewhere. I had to look up later on. Oh, it's that person. <laughs> it's always annoying me to see that. It's like, who? I know that face. Um, but yeah, that's done well as well because they, they, they do start to get a clue like they were liability and they start to realise oh we have to try and step up a little bit now and, and you get a sense there's a trailer in, at the end for the next part and you get a sense of movement for these characters and the, the wagon train one is the kind of one that's least developed out of all the, all the strains but it comes in the latest really as the latest kind of addition to the story be a sense of that's an important part of the story. Uh, this is going to be a civilization we're going to follow when they arrive at Horizon, because that's where they're going to Horizon, where there's been a massacre. And as the story goes on, you follow the boy also going through the, the tracking stuff, and you get Jeff Fahey as one of the trackers who's pretty brutal. And you get a sense of this, this is a, a business, killing Indians and scalping them for money. And you see the boy realizing he's in the wrong company and there's a really good scene in the uh, with James um, Russo 
as in this one area where they buy get supplies and if there's an Indian here and they sort of danger of these trackers and just how violent they are and again how unrestrainedly violent they are. So the film has a good sense of the, the uh, optimistic side and the dangerous side of the West. And that's what it's about. It's about the atmosphere. It's not about one story. It's about all the stories creating an atmosphere of what the West is. So that's what I liked with the film is the sense of you get set, instead of just following one story or following a variety of stories you're getting a different sense of the world and the fact that it's a lot of fragmented because of that doesn't bother me I'm, I'm used to that in books I'm used to that generally that does not bother me the fact is there's lots of stories to follow it's not a problem I think for some people who expect westerns to have one simple story that's a problem but I think they have just been myopic and I also think the, the bad critical reception really hurt the film. I think the critics have a lot to answer for it because I think it's a lot better film than it's been made out to be and it's been putting people off and who might see it later on but the idea of a three hour film and it's getting no support for the critics and it's undeserved. It's just that politically they, they think all oh, this is more right leaning than I like even though it's really not. It's just like, it's about this establishment of the West basically. So yeah, it's a definite film to see. It's it's worthwhile. Uh, it's, it's a lot of Bimmer like Craig's are saying. It's well acted. There's some lovely sequences in it. It's well shot. You know, it's just um, it's one of those films that's just not politically, you know, in tune with the times. But that's that's a real shame. I think just like uh, it's one of those films that have just had bad timing because you have the wrong batch of people who are critics at the time for it. But I'm hoping that um, it'll build up an audience. Because I think it's done well like in, um, on streaming. Which is a shame because you really want to see it on a bigger screen. I saw it in the projector and it looks gorgeous. Okay, now we're going to the Iron Claw, which did a lot better critically than Horizon. And I would say it's the lesser film of the two. I like this film, but it's not the great film it's made out to be. It's well put together. It's well acted. It's about wrestling. It treats the wrestling world seriously. Like, this is a business. We're putting on a show, but people get injured, and how you build yourself up within the industry is you show you can hold the belt and get people in the building. That's how you become the top drawer. The top drawer as a champion. And in a sense of this is what you're building towards rather than individual matches is interesting but it's not developed it as much as I'd hope and there's just this sense in this film that um, it's bitty is the best way to put it it's well made it's well written but your feeling is there's probably another half hour probably have helped it so it's a two hour film it's one time I think more time would have helped this film there's certain things you would have liked to know a bit more about that they move on from quick. Because it's just jumping lots of years telling the story of Von Erichs. Von Erichs was this big wrestling family who were very successful. Became the um, the big one of the big powers in Texas wrestling. And in the time when WWE was taking over the whole wrestling industry. But they were the kind of holdouts. So that whole thing is basically down to a few scenes the idea of the whole rest world's changing which is an important part of their world isn't really developed much and that, that that's the kind of thing that annoyed me about the film is that there's lots of things that I know happened that were important to this story that aren't there they miss a brother out there's, it's a story of four brothers when there's five brothers <laughs> big problem and it's about a family of, of where all the, all the family members but one died. It starts. It's a story about these brothers and they all died from the wrestling business, and that's tragic. And it is brutal watching. You see the brutal effect of the family, but there is kind of some sense of fakery within the film. It's like they they still try to fudge the fact that. 
they accept the fact that it's, it's a fake sport. There's like it basically it's a determined outcome, but within that, it's still pretty dangerous. You can take lots of the bad bumps. You can work with people you don't like. During the um, the talking and the going back and forth, a lot of the reputations get made by how well you can stop the other person. There's lots of that, but you wish there was a bit more of that. There's also the fact that Von Erichs were important in the wrestling world for a long time. And it makes them too much of an under underdog. Now, I'm not an expert in wrestling, but I like wrestling. And I know that Von Erichs were legendary. And this film shows you the start of the story and the tragedy of the story. But the centre bit when they are really famous is kind of underplayed quite a bit. And it's like, it kind of underplays how big they were in wrestling, how important this family thing was. It just seems a case of, we do the build up, they're struggling to succeed and then it's tragedy. And there's a middle section where there is some success and you wish there was a bit more of that before you go to the tragedy. Because I think it would have landed stronger if you just saw how good these guys were. And how important they were to, to this industry as it was changing. And as like the old territories were dying off and like, Vince McMahon's not even in this film and he was an important figure in this time in wrestling and it's like you do get a sense of those things missing. And that's really the big thing of Team Weight. Even if I didn't know about wrestling, I still think this film would feel a bit bitty, like it jumps too much and you get a feeling of I know I'm missing something. Like, I know a lot of what I'm missing, but even if I didn't know, I would probably feel it. And a lot of the time, the actors make up for that. I mean, they do not look like the, the counterparts. The Von Erics were massively huge, and most actors aren't as big as these wrestlers were. Um, so you just have to go with good actors who understand the craft of acting and can be physical and just say, use your imagination. <laughs> Because it's like, most people who are that physicality can't act. It's just, that's just the truth. So you have to you go, go with actors or go with people who look the parts. So they went with good actors. And everyone acts really well. And there's a lot, individual scenes, there's a lot of good scenes. But the what was my criticism pointed out was the fact is, they don't talk to each other, the wrestlers, but talk to each other. A lot of conversations are like, explanation for the outside world rather than actually ways people would talk to each other in this industry and you do get that sometimes not all the time but sometimes i get that as well just watching it and thinking yeah this feels a bit like it's telling it's adjusting character stuff to tell people stuff because they, they might not know about it so the things like that throughout the film that they do feel a bit off but it's still an interesting story because it is a tragedy of a family they really focus on the idea of this family who feels cursed and slowly one by one all these brothers who you see close to each other slowly dying one by one so the, so and, and, and there was already a brother who died as a child and then they're getting pushed a lot by the father who never who, who was a successful wrestler but never reached the top so he's pushing them and he wants to reach the top for his family so he's kind of the villain of the piece even though that was kind of the industry standard of like fathers who would push their sons, if you're going to be in this industry, I'm going to treat you like a, I would treat a professional, you know. Plus, I'm invested. So, if you want to be in the industry, you have to be full in. Now, that thing is his case isn't really made. He is kind of turned into a villain in a way it's a bit easy. It's almost if these poor guys are victims, and it's like. No, I don't think they put the the point you were into to a degree, and the idea of their complicity within all this isn't really brought forward. It's just a sense of um, things being wrong and it's tragedy, but it's it's simplified to goodies and baddies to a degree. And I don't think that's really the case. I think it's just an old school we are doing things based on what the industry has been for, for years and years versus what happens to the children when they're dealing with that or, the, or them as young men dealing with that but that happened throughout that industry at the time everybody, if, you, if you're the offspring of someone who was a wrestler and you were going into the industry you were going to be treated roughly to make sure you had the guts to do it 
and it's just that sense this film doesn't quite get the industry it's talking about and that's the thing that's my big takeaway is like it feels kind of successful on one level we're all about this tragedy but it's also in the wrestling thing it feels a bit more unsuccessful because it's not it lacks a kind of working class feel which is one of the reasons why I think they're really critics they don't understand that kind of working class thing so the idea of this older school of doing things being the villain was very, made them very happy when it was like no nah, it's just wrestlers all want to be wrestlers and they all go through this willingly and this film kind of fudges that but the acting's good and then you do get a sense of tragedy as one brother goes in another one brother goes and they start to feel cursed and start to shut down and the sense of the industry changing there is like talk about it as, as it goes on but it's still not explained as well as it could have been to give you the idea of how fenced in these bro- these this family got later on in their lives so it's it's a good film but it's just not as good as its reviews suggest so yeah but one film is underrated one film is overrated they're both good films they're both worth watching but I think it shows you kind of bias like to one kind of film over another when it's like they both have validity and a lot of that just comes from just a cultural bias and I'm not saying that's bad I come from the side that actually, politically I come from the left which are the ones making these judgments but I can see where the errors come in here it's like you're, you're using your, your politics over your actual you know objectivity and it's like it's not quite right you know it's just like um, just be fair to films rather than be biased because it it appeals to your view of the world it's just like the right did this for decades in the from 30s 40s 50s 60s and some of the 70s and some of the 80s and film criticism it was horrible then and just because it's over the other side doesn't mean it's any more any more or less horrible the left doesn't now it's just like it's still it's like try and not be biased just try and judge films for what they are anyway that's my take i'm sure some people will not agree but there we go hope you enjoyed this video that's me for now bye